Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And welcome to my kitchen. So today we are doing a very different video, a video that I have never done here on my channel. So, um, you know, this could either go really good or really bad. Sorry if it is a little bit echoey in here, but we are in fact in my dining room slash kitchen because we have this little guy next to me. This little guy's name is George. And as you can see, George could very desperately use a grooming. In today's video, we are going to be taking this Opaws dog model that I got for Christmas for my awesome sister. We are going to transform this thing into a poodle. I honestly have no idea what the F I'm doing. Um, I am a dog groomer. That is my job, but I haven't even been doing it for a full year yet, so I'm still considered a baby groomer, but I figured this would be the perfect way to kind of practice a skill that I really want to get good at, and that is in fact poodle cuts. And I asked for this for Christmas, so I could in fact do that. So that is what we are gonna be doing today on this cutie. So here is what he looks like from all angles. Here is what he looks like in the front, the side, the back, and the other side. Now, I mean, the good thing with these little dog models here is I'm gonna be saving myself a lot of time, meaning there are no nails to clip, there are no paw pads to shave, there is no sanitary to shave. There, there are a lot of steps that I would typically do with a normal grooming dog and a live grooming dog. So really I can just focus on all of my scissor work and really kind of get good at this type of haircut because that's what I really wanna get good at. And I asked you guys when I opened this Christmas present, I asked you guys if you wanted to see a video of me grooming it and a lot of you guys said yes. So that is what we're gonna be doing today. I do still have to spend quite a bit of time brushing it out. It's not all the way brushed out, but we have a plethora of all kinds of different shears here. We have Artero, Foxy Roxy, Loyalty Pet Products, Purple Dragons. Like we have a bunch of different shears. We also have a comb. This is going to come in handy. Uh, we also have a couple slicker brushes. I have a smaller one and a bigger one. I also have a couple blades and kind of like back and forth things on if you can use clippers on the Opaws dog model. Some say yes, some say no. I am going to try it today. I honestly don't know how it's going to turn out. I could completely fuck it up. Uh, but I have a couple of 10 blades and I also have a 15 and I also have my Andis Ultra Edge 2 speed clippers right here. So I pretty, I'm pretty i pretty sure I have everything in front of me that I'm going to need for this. I am gonna be talking through as I'm doing this. This is by no means a tutorial. This is literally me filming myself trying to figure out how to groom this bad boy. Is it gonna come out good? God, I hope so, but there are no guarantees. I also have a couple of books in front of me from school. So the first one is The Theory of Five by Melissa Verplank, and this does have an entire poodle section on it. And then the other book that I have that I'm gonna kind of be using as a guide is the Notes from the Grooming Table, also by Melissa Verplank. This is the second edition, so I'm literally just going to be using this as a guide to uh, hopefully conquer this poodle. Now, the one thing that I'm worried about is the face and top knot region because I, top knots are something that I actually really struggle with. I can never, I usually always have to ask my other groomer at my work uh, for help because I really do struggle with top knots and I don't know why, uh, but that's just like the one area on a dog, on a poodle that I really struggle with. So we're really gonna kind of take our time. We're gonna have fun with it. The poodle cut that I'm going to be going for today because there are many, many different types of poodle cuts and poodle styles. I'm really gonna try to go for the retriever trim slash lamb trim kind of thing. It's pretty simple and it'll be something really easy to do on this little dog model here. Okay, so we are going to uh, put this off to the side. I found the page that I need. And we're gonna get started. The first thing that we're gonna do before we do any type of um, grooming 
clipping, scissoring, anything like that. We are going to spend a considerable amount of time brushing this bad boy. Uh, we're going to do some line brushing in areas. I'm actually going to take his tail off for the meantime because we don't need that right away. I'm actually really fucking nervous to do this. I have two other wigs, so I mean if I screw this one up, like it's not that big of a deal, but I really want to like, you know, conquer this. Yeah, we're just going to... We're just going to dive right in, and this is probably going to uh, take the longest, is just brushing him out. And another good thing about these dog models is, one, it's not a real dog, so I don't have to worry about it moving, wiggling, barking. The second thing is I don't have to worry about nicking it accidentally with my clippers or my shears. Now, I'm going to be as careful as I would with a real dog, but that's just another pro about working with these dog models because if you're nervous about that kind of thing, you can practice and you can go slow and you can practice your scissor work on something that isn't going to bleed all over your table. So, I mean, that's a really good thing. And another thing is when I need to line brush, I can just lay it on its side and I don't get any sort of fights or hustle. Oh my gosh, when I was doing that just now, the little legs made like a squeak and I literally like, cause I'm so used to grooming real dogs, I literally thought that that little squeak was a yelp. <laughs> Oh, it's not a yelp. It's not alive. This isn't fucking Toy Story. If you guys have a real dog that is this fluffy, has this really like dense coat. Now, like I said, this isn't a tutorial. I'm not training you guys how to do this. That would just be dumb. But for those of you at home who have a dog that needs to be brushed regularly, a really effective way to do that is line brushing. For those of you who don't know what line brushing is, I'm going to show you because this will save you from getting your dog shaved this will save your dog from getting shaved and it would really help your groomer out a lot is if you did this at home so let me zoom you guys in so i can kind of show you a little tip and trick on how to line brush this bad boy so well, the best way to line brush is kind of like bring all of the hair up like this this is what i do and you can see all of this like curly wavy kind of dense undercoat right there so you're going to want to take a slicker brush and the one thing with slicker brushes is you never use your wrist never ever you basically use your elbow you keep your wrist like this a good way to test it is take your forearm take your slicker brush and just go like this if it doesn't hurt you it won't hurt the dog all right if you can use it on your skin you can use it on your dog skin all the coat up like this take your slicker brush and we're going to brush so see how it's taking each layer like that and we're bringing all that hair down and we're brushing it down like this whoops stay up and into a lymph noodle on me just like this and this is going to ensure that you're getting all of that coat this is really good for poodles doodles um, anything drop coated that has a really just long heavy dense coat this is really, really effective and it really kind of ensures that all that hair is getting brushed. So they call it line brushing because when you push that hair up, you can see that line right here. So you basically just want to start there and just kind of brush down like that. Now it is very time consuming. It is a little bit tiring, but it's definitely worth it because it'll keep your pet's coat nice and tangle free. Your groomer will appreciate it. So if you have a dog that you want to keep really long and fluffy and cute, make sure you brush at home and definitely make sure you line brush if it is applicable for the dog that you have. Basically just going to do this technique over the whole entire dog model like that and you can see just how nice that coat lays so here's the difference we line brush right here but we have not lined brush here and you can kind of see the difference so like I said it's very time consuming uh, it takes a lot of elbow grease but it, it is what must be done to have a flawless hand scissored haircut okay so that's how you line brush thanks for coming to my TED talk It wouldn't be dog grooming if you didn't have dog hair in your coffee. Do you guys see the difference? 
Here's the foot that we're currently brushing out and here's the foot that we still need to brush out. Quite a big difference. This will really, really make a difference on your haircut, I promise. So just make sure you have everything nice and brushed out. This is taking way too long. I will come back when I have everything fully brushed out. Otherwise, we're gonna be sitting here for 45 minutes just watching me brush this damn thing. So um, yeah, we're gonna come back when it's time to clipper the face, all right? See you guys in probably, well for you, a millisecond. For me, probably a good half hour. And we're back, hi. So I think I got it all brushed out and the one way to test it is you take your little comb, this comb, and you brush through and as long as it doesn't catch, then you know you have everything nice and brushed out. And I spent a good like half hour brushing this little guy out. So hopefully he is ready for his haircut. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to trim the face. Since this is a dog model and not a real dog, this is very important. I can be a little more aggressive with it and I can really kind of dig my blade in there. Now if this were a real dog, you would never dig your blade in anywhere, but since this is not a real life dog with no soul, no, no glisten in the eyes, no cute little you know, no cute little tongue. Um, we can be a little bit more aggressive with it. So let's clipper this face, shall we? So I'm gonna start with a 10 blade right here on my clippers. Um, like that, ooh, shit. Very much like a Havanese Shih Tzu, Lasha Aspo, whatever. So we're gonna try to transform this bad guy into a poodle. It's actually clippering really nicely, so no worries there. We're looking like a poodle. So here is our little shaved poodle face. It actually went a lot better than I thought it was going to, so that's a good sign. It clipped really, really nicely. There are still some like loose hairs right here, but we will worry about those later when we do the finishing touches. So the next thing that I'm going to do is, hmm, let's see, what do I, what do I even want to do? Look at all this, look at all this hair. Like, holy shit. <laughs> next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking some length off of the body. And for that, I'm going to take my comb and I'm going to kind of back brush and brush up a little bit like this and then I'm going to take my Artero straights and I'm just going to start chopping all of this off So I know it looks really choppy right now, but don't worry too much about that because that is what we are going to go in and kind of finesse. So now that I have it, you know, just kind of, you know, rough, roughed in a little bit, I'm going to go in and do 
the feetsies, we're gonna really kind of round those babies out. Now we have the feet kind of roughed in a little bit and now I'm starting to get to the point where I'm like, oh shit, like what now? <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna go in with my curved shears right here and I'm going to start kind of conforming the underside of the belly and the leg. This is always where I kind of struggle. And once we get the legs the correct length that I want them, we'll go in and neaten up some of this shit. Look at that, look at that, that's a nice booty. This is such a good dog. Look at him just standing here all perfect while I work. What a good little dog. Why can't all real dogs be like this, seriously? This is actually a lot of fun. I thought I was gonna be like stressed out the whole time, but I'm actually having a lot of fun. This is, this is really cool. So, all right, so there's that leggy all done compared to the, you know, before and the after. Now, again, it's not perfect. It's not completely finished because we are gonna go in and kind of neaten everything up a little bit, but I'm now going to do the front leg so we can kind of get it to match. Now I need to move his ear out of the way. And I'm just gonna brush upward. like a really good way to practice your um, like scissor control because that's like the one thing that um, the grooming industry has kind of like strayed away from is I feel like a lot of people do a lot of their finessing with clippers whereas the art of scissor work has kind of you know disappeared so these are these little dog models I feel are a really good way to practice your kind of scissor control your scissor technique Okay, so here are the legs as of right now, and here is the before, and then the after. So I'm gonna go off camera, I'm going to finish up these two legs right here, and then we'll come back and kind of tighten everything up. So here's the before and after. So now the main thing we need to work on is the body and making the body look a little bit less choppy because there are still quite a few little bit of scissor marks, so we're gonna work on that. And then we need to tackle the top knot. As you can see, we are, you know, slowly but surely starting to get somewhere with that. I did go in with my clippers again and kind of bring down the neckline a little bit. I tried to imagine if I could bring the dog's nose and kind of pull it down to its chest 
where it would kind of be so that's just kind of where I left that kind of cleaned it up a little bit more um, so yeah now we're just going to be working on the body uh, getting that nice and neat looking the top knot the ears and the tail of course which I have not forgotten about but as you can see, we are slowly but surely getting somewhere. Look how freaking cute. And I didn't even have to do poodle feet on this guy because it already has the little tiny feet. So, okay. Um, this next part, I'm a little bit nervous for because, again, I am a new groomer. So when it comes to um, scissor work and scissor control, that is something that I am definitely still trying to uh, kind of master a little bit. But um, I think as long as I use like some thinners, some chunkers, uh, and really just kind of take my time, I think it'll turn out okay, maybe. I mean, I don't think the body is going to be like my best looking feature, let's be honest. But I'm just honestly, I'm just like shocked that it's going as good as it is. I thought I was going to like fuck this up from the get go. So I'm like super glad that uh, I haven't. So yay. And then we're going to leave all of this. Oh, I should give it a mohawk. <laughs> Look how badass that looks. Dude. Rock and roll. Okay, and then I'm going to take my slicker brush. Actually, no, I'm going to take my comb and I'm going to just slightly brush some of this up because I still want to take quite a bit of length off. And then I'm just going to go in with my curves and I'm not going to pick up my curves, I'm just going to kind of ride the body like this. It's so weird for me to be like talking while I'm grooming because I don't normally talk when I'm grooming. I'm usually just like, you know, watching YouTube videos or listening to music while I'm doing this. So, well, I shouldn't say watch YouTube videos. I more or less just listen to them. Okay, so we're looking a little bit smoother now. Typically with like the retriever trim for a poodle, I know it's normally a 7F that people take, but I wanted mine to be a little bit more fluffy just so I could kind of work on my scissor control and scissor technique. It looks so weird without a tail. <laughs> Not picking up my scissors too much because that's when you get uh, chalk lines. So I'm kind of just gliding over the area. I'm pretty sure this is like my first attempt at like a full hand scissored body. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think this is my first time doing like a full, a fully hand scissored situation. So because even though yes, it is a lot faster and a lot more time efficient to just go in with clippers, like I would probably be done by now if I just went in with my seven and called it a day. But to be honest, I want I want to get good at my scissor work. Like I look like a poodle. Did I do it? <laughs> One tip for um, scissor control that I learned while I was in school is you take a pair of your shears like this and you basically here, let me show you is they teach you to take a pair of your shears and go up along a flat surface. So like either a wall or a tabletop and you just do this just like this all along that surface. And that'll kind of teach you how to keep your shears kind of level like that. And it honestly has helped so much. So, you know, when you're watching TV and every commercial that comes on, just kind of do that. Just take a pair of your shears, go up against a wall and just kind of open and close, open and close right along that straight edge. And that really will kind of help just kind of follow the curve. If you are doing like a hand scissored body and you do start to get kind of like these choppy bits, um, that's usually when I'll go in with like a pair of either chunkers or some really good thinners or something and just kind of do that. Because the one thing I learned in school is that your thinners are basically your ultimate eraser. They can pretty much erase any mistake. If you accidentally make a chalk line that isn't supposed to be there, your thinners will definitely kind of help do that for you. Okay, and now I'm gonna do the chest.
with some chunkers. These are by Foxy Roxy. I actually just got these because I signed up for their Scissor of the Month Club. So literally for $45 a month, you get a brand new pair of Foxy Roxy shears. And I just got these ones and these ones fucking rock. They're amazing. So as you can see, the body looks a lot smoother. I mean, it's not perfect by any means because like I said, I am still, I'm still very much learning. So far I have been filming this video for two hours. So if any of you are wondering how long it takes a baby groomer to film a poodle cut, so far two hours and we still have the top knot, the ears and the tail to do, so. Shit. We're gonna do the top knot trick, and I learned it in school. It is the side to side, front to back. What you do is, oh lord, is you take all of the hair in the top knot area, and you wanna make sure that it's separated from the ear leather. So where's the top of the ear? Like right here. And I'm gonna brush it over to one side. So we're gonna start on this side first, apparently. Okay, so once we have all the hair brushed over to one side, I'm gonna find the top of this ear and just kind of move everything out of the way. If I remember correctly, <laughs> I'm going to take my straight and I'm gonna move the ear out of the way, or I'm gonna hold it down at least. So it is like this, I'm just gonna cut like that. Okay, all right. Woo! Okay, that's one side, and then you're gonna do the same thing, but you're going to brush all the hair over to this side now. I zoomed you guys in more so you can kind of see more of what I'm doing. So now I'm gonna take everything and I'm gonna brush it over to this side. Okay. Oh my gosh, it looks like we have a top knot forming. So now I'm gonna take all that hair and I'm gonna brush it forward. So it kind of looks like it's rocking the bang life. And then I'm gonna take a pair of curves and I'm just going to really kind of bevel this. The thing with poodles is they have a very intelligent expression. So you really kind of want to capture that. Okay, and then I'm gonna brush all the hair to the back like this. And just very, very lightly, I'm just gonna kinda curve this out, I think. Not 100% sure. Can you hear the confidence in my voice? So now we're going to fluff her up. So I'm just gonna go in with some thinners. And just kind of get rid of some of those flyaways. <laughs> Am I doing this right? because the top knot is the extension of the skull. So kind of something like that. Holy shit. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna leave that for now. That looks a lot better than I thought it was going to. Not even kidding, you guys. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tackle the ears. So I am gonna go in with my 10 blade again on my clippers. Uh, first, I'm just gonna go through and really brush out our little model's ear here. Okay, and then to kind of get rid of this like sharp, like bloop, I'm just gonna go in with some thinners and I'm just going to ride 
that line. Now again, if this were a real dog, you'd want to be so, so careful in the ear area because if you accidentally nick an ear, which if you do, it's okay, it happens, but if you do accidentally nick an ear, they bleed like a bitch. So just be really careful and try to avoid that. But I'm just gonna go in and kind of thin so it doesn't look so harsh. So then for the bottom of the ears, I'm gonna kind of like round them out a little bit. So you can kind of see where my like invisible line is because we have all of this like weird fluffy shit that I'm gonna get rid of. So I'm just gonna go in with some curves. Okay, I'm gonna hold the ear like this. And I'm just going to ever so slightly just round them out so they look more full. So there's what that one looks like compared to this one. So you can kind of see kind of see where I'm going with this. Go. So now our little poodle has the ears done, the top knot done. Now we just have the tail to do. So we have a little tail right here. And this is something that I've definitely never done before. I really kind of want to do like a pom-pom tail, but I don't really know how to go about that. So let me, you know, check my book. The first thing that we need to do, and since this isn't like a real dog, it's gonna be kind of hard to do because the tail slips on and off so easily. Um, so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the end of the tail and I'm gonna brush all of the hair up towards the tip. Now this is what my book is telling me to do. And this is my first time ever doing like a pom-pom tail. So, you know, wish me luck. Okay, so once I have all the hair kind of brushed up, I'm gonna take the very tip top of this and kind of twist it. And I'm going to just kind of bevel. And then next, I'm literally just going to try to just follow the shape of it. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Will this turn out to be a pom-pom? I don't fucking know. I guess kind of. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> Dude, seriously, the mess in the state of my kitchen right now, holy hell. Like... This is the bottom of my slipper. You guys see that? Oh my god. My gosh. Did we do it? You guys, look it. It's a poodle. like before we started cutting it and what it looks like now I am pretty damn proud of myself like I did not even think it was going to be even remotely as good as this now I'm sure when I'm editing this video I'm sure I'm gonna see like 80 different things that are gonna pop out at me that I wish I would have scissored up now it's really really cute it looks like a poodle we have the little pom-pom we have the kind of really cute combination we have the full scissored body no clipping whatsoever on the body which i'm very proud of myself because not i feel like could be a little bit better but i mean for my first like official one doing it on my own with like no mentor or anything I don't think it looks that bad. I think we pretty much accomplished exactly what I wanted to do today. I wanted to do a poodle cut. I'm sure there are many different things that could be better. I'm sure there may be some stray hairs sticking out somewhere that maybe a more experienced groomer is going to pick up on right away. But for the most part, I'm really happy with this. I think it turned out really freaking good. We have one more thing left to do. Before George goes home, now spray with some colonzies. 
That was everything that I had for today's video. I really, 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 really hope that you guys enjoyed. Like I said, if you would like to see another one of these, make sure you go down and let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments how you think I did for my very first poodle cut. I would love to hear. If you are new to my channel, make sure you go down and hit that red subscribe button. I do upload every three to four days here, but I don't just upload dog grooming content. I do a bunch of stuff. We do makeup, tattoos, piercings, vlogs, dog grooming anything you can think of we do it all here on my channel so make sure you guys go down and subscribe if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you go down and give it a huge thumbs up I would greatly appreciate it and so would George he was such a good boy today just sitting here like a good little dog but yeah that is all that I have I love you guys so so much thanks again so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video I love you guys bye